I'm on Hollywood Boulevard at the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And if you are looking for some legendary Hollywood magic, then today's video is for you. I am having dinner here at Musso and Frank's. Musso and Frank's is the oldest restaurant in Hollywood. It opened in 1919 and it became a favorite place of movie stars who were filming in the area. It said that Charlie Chaplin would challenge Douglas Fairbanks to a horse race here on Hollywood Boulevard and the winner would buy lunch at Musso and Frank's. <laughs> There are plenty more stories. This is, I said, the oldest restaurant in Hollywood and it is one of the oldest in Los Angeles. It is fine dining and if its walls could talk, well, they wouldn't say anything because it is very discreet. So let's go in and check it out. Here's the layout of the restaurant. The first time I came, I got a booth here. The second time, I wanted to sit at the bar. Just to the left of the front door is Charlie Chaplin's booth. Charlie Chaplin came here so often, they gave him his own booth. He would often dine with Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and Rudolph Valentino. This is the most requested table at the restaurant. In 1933, Prohibition ended and Musso and Frank wasted no time building this bar, this counter, these seats, they are the original from 1933. Raymond Chandler spent a lot of his time in here writing his novel, The Big Sleeve, which later became a movie starring Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart, who were also regulars at this bar. Here's a look at their menu, which is printed daily. You can see I was here on August 31st. Take a look at the Musso's Merchant Lunch. It has omelets, flannel cakes, salads, hot sandwiches, and cold sandwiches served only until 3 p.m. Except Musso's doesn't open until 5 p.m. <laughs> this part of the menu is never available. It's a nod to the Musso's of the past. So there are a lot of stories about celebrities coming to Musso and Frank's over the years and I have a link in the description with a list of all the stories. But I have one that's not on that list and I know it's a true story because I heard it from the parking attendant who heard it from the busboy who heard it from the bartender. <laughs> Barbara Streisand was, came into Musso and Frank and she was incognito. She's sitting here at the bar eating and a tourist comes in and she comes up to the bartender who is right next to Streisand and says, do any celebrities come in here to eat? And he's like, mm, not really. And she's like, oh, that's too bad. And then she leaves. <laughs> so Barbara Streisand looks up and says, nice job. <laughs> Although the bar is open, all the booths have high backs to give you privacy while you're eating. I loved the luxury feeling. All the tables have white tablecloths and cloth napkins. Even at the bar, you have a white placemat with cloth napkins. And the plates are customized with the Musso and Frank name. Every diner will get an individual butter in a sealed ramekin and bread that's stacked top to bottom, not side to side. The first night I was there, I had the eight ounce filet mignon, medium rare, with a side of asparagus with hollandaise sauce, and a loaded baked potato. All delicious. For dessert, the waiter recommended the cheesecake, but I opted for the creme brulee, which was blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries, resting on a perfectly caramelized top over creamy vanilla custard. Yum. The second night, I started with the Caesar salad. I had the spinach and ricotta ravioli as my main course. Again, delicious. And again, the waiter recommended the cheesecake. So I got two different waiters, two different nights, both recommending the cheesecake. I have to try it. I can see now why they say the cheesecake is incredible because it's incredible. It is so light and creamy. I, I have never had cheesecake this good. 
seriously the best cheesecake I've had in my life. Credit Garbo, Dashiell Kama, Orson Welles, they have all had martinis at this bar. <laughs> During Prohibition, Musu and Frank had an illegal speakeasy on this side of the restaurant. They say it was accessed through here, the ladies' room. That bar and its hidden entrance are long gone. The new bar is on the other side of the restaurant. I am at the new bar, and this was opened in 1955 on this side. This is strictly for drinking, it is not uh, for eating. So if you want to have dinner, I wasn't driving, so I had a wonderful 2016 Challen Pinot Noir. This side of the restaurant, the new bar, has all of these amazing pieces of artwork, really interesting, and it's also got the private dining rooms. They have valet parking in the back. If you enter from the parking lot, you'll pass through this hallway of history where there are nostalgic photos, early menus, and a couple of ancient phone booths. <laughs> ancient phone booths. <laughs> and then you're in the restaurant where today's magic happens. I didn't mean to stay as late as I did. I thought I would be out before the sun went down, but it's dark, Hollywood is now hopping, and it's time for me to head home. This was a fantastic dinner, a fantastic experience. So, like I said, if you are looking for a legendary Hollywood experience, this is the place to come. Also, excellent food. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you find your adventure.